All right, guys, welcome back to the Independence Missouri mid held by Game Cafe. Uh, we're here in round four, and for this time, we got a couple of two ones here. We got St. Louis 2016 regionals runner up Sean Martin versus Josh Adams. Uh, another repeat here, but hopefully it's okay with you guys. This is the best, what we thought was the best game available. Because we didn't want to put John Masters on for three rounds in a row. And we haven't seen Sean yet. So, but either way, it should be a really good match. Two really good players. Of course, we didn't see that Josh was running that uh, rain team last round. So, we're going to be seeing that again here. I uh, don't know Sean's team yet, but we'll probably see. We'll see here in a few minutes. Um... Other things, other well, notices about the tournament. Our two undefeated right now are Ethan, not Ethan, uh, Leonard, Kraft, and John Masters, both a 3 0. Other two ones include 2014 St. Louis Regional Champion Philip Bargon, Ben Goff, and Ethan Simpson. And we actually see Sean's team here on screen. And we have a rain mirror here. Uh, Sean's team, of course, having Pelipper over Polytoad. And I actually know the team that uh, Sean is using. I actually used this on one of my live streams the other day. It's a fun team. But give them a team preview here. Of course, Sean running Ludicolo, Halibur, Metagross, Hydreigon, Tabu, and Landorus. And Josh running Polito, Ludicolo, Landorus, Salamence, Tabu, So another Metagross, four for four. <laughs> Yeah, so um, Metagross one of the defining Pokemon um, in basically every metagame it's legal in. Um, it just has such good stats and the ability to intimidate being so valuable in doubles play particularly. Um, not surprising to see it splashed on nearly every team because it can just blanket check so many Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing to note is we're seeing a lot of rain, which is pretty common early on in the format. Uh, because rain is just something that's always fairly comfortable. Players can fall back on. It's reliable. Um, they're used to it, they know how to play it, and uh, it offers a lot of offense um, fairly easily. So both players picking their teams, we're going to go ahead and jump into turn one and uh, take a look at their leads. Yeah, and with this being a rain mirror, I think Sean's Pelipper here is going to be really important for it. Because, of course, Pelipper has that option of just delete turn one, because we saw Josh is running Hydro Vortex not the assault best like it used to run. And then we actually see the rain lead come out from <clears throat> front Sean against Tabu Coco and Salamence for Josh. Of course, shiny Tabu Coco, that event from last year, signifying that it is timid. And of course, Salamence firing off some timid here, useless because both these are special attackers. And we see the rain. So, no Scar Pelipper. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ludicolo here is threatening both Pokemon with KOs. Hydro Vortex, if it isn't, if it is carrying that, I think Hydro Pump anyway. Straight up Oko, Tabu Koko, and Ice Beam threatening Salamence. Yeah, but on the flip side, Salamence also threatening the one hit KO on Ludicolo with um, you know, any of its flying type moves, well, normal type moves boosted by Aerial 8. And Tabu Koko, you know, if it's running that Z Electric. Um, enough to get rid of Ludicolo as long as it's not an Assault Vest variant and, um, you know, barring a Focus Sash on Pelipper, able to get a one-hit KO. So this is a really critical turn um, because both players threaten damage on their opponent. Um, so we do see no Protects right away going for that Hydro Vortex um, from the Ludicolo. Um, and one other important thing here is that we saw that the Salamence did not Mega Evolve, meaning it's not going to be able to hit uh, Ludicolo with a flying type attack this turn, which could be really huge. So this Hydro Vortex into the Tapu Koko picks up a clean one-hit KO. Um, so that's going to be a really big turn for Sean as um, Pelipper sets Tailwind after Salamence sets Tailwind. So mirroring Tailwinds going on. And uh, Sean essentially just picks up a free KO onto that Tapu Koko. Yeah, pretty simple turn there from Sean, I feel. Probably his best play because of Tapu Koko for and you double edge Ludicolo. 
Then you're just setting up whatever you have in the back to just deal with. But just deal with the Coco and Salamence. We see Amoongus come in here. Um, kind of a strange switch in. Well, of course, it being a previous good counter rain, Teleport is a kind of reason that that has gone down because of course, ending it with a hurricane, which is something that Amoongus has never really been used to taking. Is that Luigi could have just Ice Beam the Salamence because it bypasses the Rage Powder. Salamence finally going to Mega Evolve. So, gonna get that aerial aid boost now. I actually see a protect. So, not wanting to take an ice beam. And Pelipper does go for Hurricane onto Amoongus. Not, shouldn't pick up the KO, which it just also keeps it out of barrier range, but it does pick up the confusion, which could be big here. And Amoongus does hit itself with confusion, and it does not proc a barrier. It carries now, um, I do. I actually do think that confusion doesn't proc berries. Like, even if it does put you in range for it, I do. I may. Be, I may be completely misremembering. Okay. But well, Metagross here is starting a KO onto both of these at this range. So, I'm gonna have its pick of the letter here. Will come out with that Mega Evolution. I'm gonna get that Tough Claws ability. It's gonna be interesting to see which one it targets down. And which it doing so. Yeah, so Rage Rage does here. hit through the confusion to get that Rage Powder. I mean, Salamence is gonna be safe from the Metagross for at least this turn. And see as it does fire off a Hyper Voice, deals a ton of damage to that Pelipper. As Metagross chooses to go for a substitute instead, kind of setting itself up for future success here. As Pelipper picks off that Amoongus with the Hurricane. Mm -hmm. So, good turn there from Sean. Just getting that Metagross set up for this last turn or so. Because if there's a Landorus in the back, it is going to dodge that Intimidate. And just be able to not have to worry about getting knocked out by Earthquake. Because... Scarf Landers. Right. And then the other round. important thing here um, is that Metagross will still be taking damage from Hyper Voice because mm -hmm. sound based moves do hit through um, Substitute. However, because it's a Steel type, it does resist that Flying type. Um, but Hyper Voice isn't a huge threat to it right now. So that Substitute is definitely going to be coming in clutch, especially if this Landorus, um is the Scarf variant, which I think we saw in the last set that Josh was on. Mm -hmm. So, Metagross still wanting to just play it safe here, going for that Protect. As we see a double Protect actually from Pelipper as well, just wanting to scout out to see if that Landers is indeed Choice Scarf, which it does reveal so by going for the Earthquake here. This, of course, not affecting Pelipper because it's Flying type. And we just see another Hyper Voice come out from Salamence into that double Protect. So, I don't mind that play from Sean, because you, you get that confirmation that it is Choice Scarf. Your Metagross still has its substitute up. It's probably going to lose it this turn. But another thing is here, you're forcing Salamence into attacking. So you could potentially pick up a free KO here. With Salamence, that means he's not Tailwinding. And that means your Metagross is going to be getting off a free attack. So it'll be interesting to take see which one he targets here with an Ice Punch if he potentially has it. But we actually see Pelipper switch out for top of Coco. So I think on an earthquake. I actually don't mind this play because um, this is the last turn of rain. So by switching out the Tapu Koko, um, you know you're sacking it to the earthquake, which you know is coming. But it does give you the chance to bring it, bring back in Pelipper to reset the rain, um, which is going to be really important. So Metagross's substitute is broken by the earthquake, and it does take a high place, but that's just not quite enough damage. Um, as we see Iron Head come out, so that does make me wonder if maybe there's not a, uh... Yeah, seeing if there's two four times Ice Week Pokemon on the field, you gotta assume it's not there. Right. Um, so now Salamence is in a position where it can go for, it doesn't need to go for damage because it threatens with the, uh... What am I saying? Let me, let me get my thoughts together. Um, it doesn't need to go for damage, um because setting the Tailwind is probably going to be better for it. However, with Ludicolo coming in here, um, threatening that Fake Out to prevent Salamence from being able to set Tailwind to match the speed, 
um, and bringing Pelipper in, which is going to take no damage from this Earthquake, and Ludicolo is going to resist Earthquake to not take very much damage, um, is really going to help put Sean in a strong position, because now his Ludicolo is faster than the Salamence, um, which is going to be really huge for finishing up this game. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how much this Earthquake does. Yeah, not even coming close to a 2k. I would need a double crit. Because, of course, probably going to want to target Salamence with Ludicolo. Oh. Uh, Landers isn't threatening either of these folks. There. Salamence will protect. So, probably going to need a double protect and a quick crit. So, knock out this Ludicolo. Right, so... Um, Josh um, definitely going to his outs here, you know. He knows that his... Oh, actually... Was that a crit? No, that may not. just be damage rolls. However, this grind is going to pick up the KO. On. So unless the Salamence can get enough protects in a row to stall out the end of rain, um, it's probably not going to be able to close out the game. And of course, Pelipper can also set Tailwind to uh, prevent that from happening. Yeah, per yeah, safe Ice Beam Tailwind here. There's not much Josh can really. The Ice Beam. Which it will not. Ludicolo, not the strong, not really known for its strength all that much. But of course, with that four times weakness, just easily able to pick off that supplements with Ice Beam. And Sean takes that game 3 1, 3 0, pretty handily. Uh, I think a definitely big turn there was turn one, of course, just Tabu Koko being deleted right away. Just, and just letting that Palipper kind of run free, because. Just not having to worry about Thunderbolts coming in was pretty big there, and just getting to come in and re So, be interesting to see what Josh does to adapt here. I think this is definitely a winnable matchup. Like, we saw Salamence there is putting a, puts a lot of pressure onto Sean's team, especially paired with that Landorus, so getting those two into a right, into the correct position is going to be really important, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, positioning that Salamence, because it is, like you said, it's threatening a lot. It's Hyper Voice dealt a ton of damage to Pelipper. Um, Double Edge going to be able to deal a ton of damage to Ludicolo. Um, you know, it's definitely in position where it can deal with um, the opposing rain mode um, fairly well. And it does look like Josh is feeling pretty confident that he has a game plan. You know, didn't need any time to think there. And so we're going to jump straight into game two. Um, we're going to see how these players kind of adapt after the information that they picked up. I think the key takeaway that Josh took there is that, that Metagross doesn't have Ice Punch, which does mean his Salamence is a little safer in front of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll see Ludicolo Salamence here. So I like the Ludicolo here a lot more than a because you're taking advantage of Josh's reign now. And your Ludi and his Ludicolo now outspeeds everything on uh, Sean's field. So I'm gonna still have to be careful with this Pelipper, as of course it can just knock out knock it out in one turn. But right, because the um, these Ludicolos are not carrying the assault that they um, were so used to in or in 2014 and 2015. Um, opting for the damage output of that Hydro Vortex. That does mean that these Hurricanes are going to deal a ton of damage. Um, so both Ludicolos threatened by the Flying type on the opposing side of the field, both threatening Fake Out. Um, you know, so it could come down to which one's faster or who wins the speed tie um, and who targets who. So this is a really important turn to get right for both players because you know you could be just picking taking free KOs. Um, for nothing. So we do see the fake out from Sean's Ludicolo into Salamence as um, Josh's... We'll see the fake out going to the opposing Ludicolo. So that is a free tailwind. That is really unfortunate for uh, Josh as now he's facing a Ludicolo in rain and tailwind. It's going to be the fastest thing on the field for sure. Um, Josh's P Ludicolo could still be faster than Pelipper, which could be important for getting like a Giga Drain off for damage on either one of these, but um, still definitely not a great position. Yeah, that's a really important speed tie, potential speed tie win, I guess, or just the fact that Sean got the fake out off. Because if Salamence is the one that gets that fake out, or if 
But uh, if Josh is the one is the one that gets the fake out off the Salvin. Potentially knocking out Ludicolo and we see damage it did to Pelipper. So and we see her we see Ice Beam into that protect Hurricane coming out onto the incoming top of Coco. Does so much damage with the critical. Wow, that critical hit is really huge because um, it now means that Tapu Koko is going to be in the range where Brian deals double damage as well. Um, and so Sean is in a position where he has no reason not to Ice Beam the Salamence and go for a water move into Tapu Koko, assuming his Pelipper has been trained to be faster than Tapu Koko after Tailwind. Um, so that's really putting um, Josh you know, on his back feet there. Um, by keeping the pressure up. Mm -hmm. Gotta be... I feel like if you're Josh, of course you want to preserve the Salomon, so I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out in a Ludic to eat this Ice Beam, which it looks like it's going to be doing. Just knowing how important Salomon is to stopping this duo in particular once Rain gets up, just something he needs to preserve here. Ludicolo Ice Beam into the opposing Ludicolo. Does... Decent amount of damage, about 25% there. Yeah, and so this looks like... He's now exerting fake out pressure, probably. Is... Potentially. Like, you, I can justify faking out either one. Just you're, The top of Coco here is in not a good spot at all. It's being threatened right. by both Pokemon with KOs. Either one of these Pokemon can pick up the KO on top of Coco. Pelipper can pick up the KO on Ludicolo. Um, so... Taking that fake out into the Pelipper to protect your own Ludicolo, really big right there. Um, as we do see the Hydro Vortex coming out, probably into that Tapu Koko to pick up the KO. So, I like that fake out from... The Pelipper was the correct target there, because you, you get that Focus Sash bro, of course, which is potentially important with the... You know how... Assuming Ludicolo just straight out outspeeds Pelipper, Outside of rain, like once this rain gets out, you can bring south. Potentially KOs the Pelop. Oh, we see Salamence come in here. Wouldn't be surprised if this protects. I think. I don't. This isn't the last turn of rain. I think there's one more turn after this. Um, well, Tailwind was set on the first turn and it just petered out. And it's good for four turns. So this should be the last turn of rain, I think. All right. Um, yeah. so yeah, like, this is sort of an interesting position, because Ludicolo, again, is free to Ice Beam the Salamence, um, so the Protect is a fairly obvious play there, however, not, um, playing to that, um, could be... Ice Beam come out from Josh's Ludicolo, not like a Giga Drain trying to back. Pelipper will Hurricane the Ludicolo, going to pick up the KO there, um... I don't even think Giga Draining there would have... I don't know if Giga Drain saves it. Right, I don't think Giga Drain would have dealt enough damage to uh, KO this Pelipper. And um... and this is this is the spot now that we were talking about. Where... Ludicolo is now threatened by the Salomon's Hydra Voice. Has no way of outbeating it. And Sean's team, unless he has Hydreigon in the back... He has no switch into Earthquake. We see Ludicolo actually switch out for Metagross. It's going to be really close. interesting to see if it's able to take an Earthquake plus Hyper Voice combo. We actually do see the double switch there. I really good play from Sean when he preserved that rain. Just accepting that this is accepting that both of these are his keys to winning. And just taking the KO on these back two. Metagross actually doesn't even get KO'd by the Earthquake. I actually think. Um, it sounds counterintuitive, but I actually think it's a little, um, well, I guess it doesn't matter now that Hyper Voice is coming out. Um, so it's going to give Sean the opportunity to bring the rain mode back in. And since there's no Tailwind on the field, um, yeah, you know, the rain mode is going to be the fastest thing. Pick. So yeah, rain comes back in, um... Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Tailwind there, like, yeah, you're not picking up the double KO with Hyper Voice, but yeah, you're in a position now. But you're preserving yourself. So yeah, Ludicolo, yeah. Um, honestly, it has no reason not to Ice Beam the Salamence. Um, we know the Landorus is locked into that quick, meaning once Salamence goes down, Landorus can't damage Pelipper, and Pelipper can freely win the game. So I do think 
uh, Tailwind would have put us in a little bit different position um, had that been the play last turn um, because it would have meant that Sean was stuck with uh, Metagross on the field facing a Scarf Landorus with Earthquake and you can only switch one in at a time rather than two. Um, but I definitely understand why, you know, like, let me go for damage, let me pick up these KOs, because Hyper Voice, you know, would have picked up the KO on Ludicolo, which you definitely want to get rid of as well. Mm -hmm. So, so Brian comes out, KO Landorus. is enough to pick up the KO on Landorus, and that gives Sean the game um, at 2-0. So, Sean will be seen in Top Cut later. Uh, Josh is going to be at 2-2 two and two with 17 players and uh, 8 of them making Top Cut. I'm not sure how many X2s are going to be making it, but um, he's got some strong resistance for sure, um, which is definitely going to be helping him out. So hopefully we can see uh, Josh later on as well. Um, well played by Sean. Um, you know, managing that rain mirror fairly well. Yeah, I think the important turn of that game was that double switch on the last turn. For sure, yeah. Making sure he maintains the rain advantage. Yeah, and just really well managed board. Like knowing that a lot of people when you they when they play they're like, oh, I want to preserve. It's one of the most important Pokemon in the metagame. But just knowing in this matchup that it's useless and using it as a sacrificial Pokemon to just keep that rain going. Oh, that's for sure. Really smart. Yeah, bo uh, actually, both games, uh, Sean went for that play where he's like, oh, Tapu Koko doesn't do a lot for me in this matchup, so I'm just going to switch it out as fodder so I can get a switch back in. Um, really well managed, just a really smart play to make. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is it for round four. Hopefully we'll be back soon with Top Cut.